This video is about the application of linear algebra to network flows. A network flow is a directed graph that shows how a demand is met by traversing a network over pre-established connections from a supplier. This can apply to things like physical supplies traveling along highways from a warehouse to a retailer, or to packets traveling through routers on the internet, or to any kind of flow. So let's look at an example. Suppose that our nodes in this network are going to be denoted by the numbers 1 through 4. We have four locations. And there's going to be a supply of 14 at node 1 and the demand of 10 at node 4 and 4 at node 3. The way we can get from our supply at node 1 to nodes 4 and 3 are through these branches which are connecting node 1 and 2, 2 and 4, 1 and 3, 3 and 4, and 2 and 3. And we'll denote these by their numbers here. So this will be x, 1, 2. So it's going from 1 to 2. It'll be x, 1, 2. This will be x, 2, 4, x, 3, 4. This one is x, 2, 3, going from 2 to 3, and x, 1, 3. So we've labeled all of our paths. Now we can write out an equation at each node by balancing the outgoing and the incoming values. So we're going to have outgoing equal to the incoming. What this basically says is that at any node we don't store anything in that node. Either it's provided as supply or as a branch going into the node or as demand, it's outgoing, or an, a branch that's leaving the node. So for the first one, we're going to have outgoing is x12 and x13. And the incoming is a supply of 14. At node 2, the outgoing is x23 and x24. And the incoming is the branch from 1, x12. At node 3, we have x34 and its demand 4 is equal to x13 and x23. And finally, at node 4, we have the demand of 10 is equal to the incoming x24 and x34. So these are all of our flow balance equations. And from these, we can write them in a standard form of variables is equal to constants by putting all of the constants on the right side and all of the variables on the left throughout all of these equations. So we're going to get x12 plus x13 is equal to 14. On this one we're going to transfer this x12 to the left side so it will become negative x12 plus x23 plus x24 is equal to 0. For the third one, again transfer all the variables to the left, constants to the right. We get negative x13 minus x23 plus x34 is equal to negative 4. And the last one, negative x24 minus x34 is negative 10. So what we see here is we have four equations, five unknowns, and therefore 
we're going to have an infinite number of solutions. So we can write this in standard matrix form, which is going to be just the coefficients times the vector of the unknowns, and that's equal to the vector of constants. This can now be written in augmented matrix form, and this can be row reduced to this form. From here we can write out the solutions based on this matrix in terms of the basic variables and the free variables as this and now we can put the basic variables on the left and everything else on the right to put it in this form and now we can write the parametric vector form as this where we have x23 and x34 as the free variables so we can see that this actually corresponds to all the solutions of the network flow. For example, if we set x23 and x34 equal to 0, we get this as a solution of the network flow, and these are the number of units traveling along each one of these branches. So we can draw that out and we're going to get this where we can again see that x23 has been set to 0 and x34 is also 0 and this solution makes perfect sense we have 14 units coming into here therefore 10 are leaving along here and 4 along here for a total of 14 4 is coming into 3 which demands 4 and 10 is traveling from 2 to 4 which also demands 10. So therefore, we've met all of our supply with our demand traveling along valid branches. We can create as many solutions as we want by setting values for x23 and x34 that are non-zero. And we're also going to get other traversals of this graph, which also work. However, none of them is really better than the other. In order to start talking about which solution is best, we have to incorporate something else. And that specifically is a cost associated with each of the branches of this graph. So what that would mean is that it costs something to travel along this network. For example, maybe it's a toll road or maybe it's the amount of time that it takes for a packet to travel along a given branch when getting from one router to another. So it could be something like delay. Whatever it is, we can associate a cost with each branch. And so with cost, our network might look like this. Here I've labeled the costs on the arcs as dollars, just to keep it concrete. So we can analyze the cost of a given solution now. We can look at when we set x23 and x34 both equal to zero. The cost is going to be Four, which is traveling along this one times the cost of this branch which is 6 plus 10 traveling along this one times its cost 2 plus 10 traveling along this branch with a cost of 3 and if we add all these up we can get a cost of $74 for this particular solution let's try another one Suppose now that x23 is equal to 1 and x34 is still equal to 0. Now our cost is equal to, if we set x23 equal to 1, then looking at our solution, we're going to take one unit we're going to add one unit to x12, so now there will be 11 traveling along x12. There are going to be 3 traveling along x13, so we take one unit off of that because of this negative 1. And there will now be 1 traveling along x23. So 11 along this arc, 
3 along this one and 1 along this one, which again makes perfect sense. So in this case, we're going to have just 3 traveling along 1 through 3 with a cost of 6, plus 11 traveling along this one with a cost of 2, and now we're also going to have 1 traveling along 2, 3 with a cost of 1, and we still have 10 traveling along the branch from 2 to 4 with a cost of 3. So this makes a total cost of $71. So we can see that we actually got a better cost solution than the previous one by adding some, uh, some travel along branch 2 to 3. So let's analyze our solution again and see how we can determine a best solution for a given case. So this is our solution from before and we can see that the cost that's going to be associated with this solution can also be denoted by a vector which has the corresponding cost for each of these branches. So looking at our graph here we see that x12 is two dollars, x136 and so on, 1, 3, and 5. So this is our cost vector. So we can analyze exactly what each of these free variables is going to do to the cost by looking at the associated cost with each of the non-zero values in these free vectors. So for example, looking at x2, 3, we can see that if we raise it by 1, we're going to increment the cost by 2, corresponding to this increase of 1 of travel along branch 1, 2. Since we get more travel along branch 1, 2, we're going to increase, increase the cost by 2. So we'll increase by 2. But over here, we're going to take 1 off of x1, 3, which is a really expensive branch at $6. So we're going to actually lower the cost by 6. Additionally, we're going to raise the cost because we're going to add travel along x23. We're going to raise it by 1. And altogether, this comes out to a decrease of 3. So we can see that by raising x23 by 1, we decrease the cost by 3. But there's a limit. We can't decrease x23 by more than 4 because that will turn x13 negative and we can't have that in this kind of a graph so therefore we can see that we have a max increase is going to be 4 so maximum is a 4 increase and that is going to lower our cost then by $12 corresponding to 4 times 3 we can analyze x34 in the same way and we see that increasing it by 1 is going to decrease the cost by 2, increase by 6, decrease by 3, and increase by 5. For a total of an increase by 6. And of course we don't want this, so in reality what we want to do is actually decrease x34 as much as possible. But if you look at this, we see that decreasing it, we can't do that because then x34 becomes negative right away since there are zeros in both of these places and a 1 over here. So lowering x34 would make x34 negative. And so we cannot do that. And since we can't decrease it, we want to just leave it alone and not use it at all because it's only going to raise our price. So we can see that the best cost is going to be by increasing x23 by 4, which is going to create, so increasing x23 by 4, then our total cost is going to equal 74 minus 12, which is going to be $62. So we save a good amount of money using this technique. And this analysis can apply to 
any kind of graph by writing out these costs and seeing what each associated free variable is going to do and then increasing it as much as we can or decreasing it as much as we can in order to lower the cost to a minimum. So overall we have seen how to write out the balance equations for a network and how to find the solution set. Additionally, we have seen how a cost on the branches affects the overall solution as a function of changing the free variables.